I'm finally back after traveling in Japan and Taiwan for the past few weeks. Today, I'm excited to share with you my personal experiences traveling with the RF70 to 200mm f4 lens and why it became my main lens on my journeys. If you haven't seen any of my travel videos, then you probably don't know this. I'm a hybrid shooter, meaning that I love to shoot both videos and photos throughout my trips. With this lens, I was able to capture beautiful sceneries and portraits. The RF70 to 200 rarely disappoints. I'll be showing you sample photos and videos from my trip. Maybe you will want to try it as your main travel lens as well. Last year, my everyday carry kit during my travels included the RF 24-70mm f2.8 and the 16mm f2.8. The 24-70 is definitely still a fantastic lens. It is wide enough for most situations and it provides a little taste of the telephoto look at the 70mm. The fast aperture also makes it super versatile throughout the day, both indoor and outdoor. For all of these reasons, I decided to bring this lens along with the 70-200mm f4 and the 35 f1.8 lens with me on this trip to Asia. Maybe I was being a little too ambitious. Reason number one, versatility. The focal length range is versatile enough for me to capture various subjects and scenes. The places we visited were mostly outdoors, so I definitely had a lot of room to move around. Ever since getting the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, I really enjoyed shooting at the longer focal lengths. I think the longest lens I had was at 105 millimeter. I love the look of the compression and also how it forced me to be more creative with my shots since they're just much tighter. With Japan being so crowded everywhere you go, I felt like this lens helped me avoid capturing the crowd a little bit. I hope that makes sense to you too. The slower aperture definitely made it hard to shoot at times. I generally stop using this lens after the sun sets. It's also not a vlogging kind of lens, so when I wanted to vlog, I would pick up my phone camera instead. Number two, portability. Since we're mostly taking public transportations and out exploring for an entire day, it's usually too heavy for me to bring both the 70 to 200 millimeter and the 24 to 70 millimeter with me. So a lot of times I ended up choosing the 70 to 200 millimeter. You must think I'm crazy, but let me show you. Since it's a slower lens, it's compact and lightweight, making it so much easier to carry around. As good of a lens as it is, the 24 to 70 mm f2.8 lens is bulky. It's great for strength training throughout the day during your travels. When I do bring the lens out, I was more tempted to put the lens back into the backpack because it was too heavy to carry around the neck for a long period of time. Number three, beautiful bokeh. Even though this lens has a high maximum aperture at f4, I was still able to get a pretty nice compression and bokeh with the longer focal lengths. I tend to shoot with my subjects closer to me. Since my destinations are mostly outdoor and I would be shooting during the day, I never really had an issue where I felt like I needed more light. Oftentimes, I still had to shoot with an ND filter and luckily I have a step up ring so I could just use the same ND filter that I have for the 24 to 70 millimeter. Number four image stabilization. This lens has built-in image stabilization, so it is great for handheld shooting. We did not travel with a tripod for this trip, so all of the footage you see in this video are shot without a tripod. The longer the focal length, the harder it was for me to keep steady on my subjects. It also takes me a few seconds to find or track my subjects when I'm using the longer focal lengths. These are just things to keep in mind if you do want to use this as your everyday carry too. I love that I was able to experiment and get creative with focal lengths that I wasn't used to. The long focal lengths also allow me to maintain a respectful distance while photographing subjects and cultural sites. It's a great lens for situations where you want to remain unobtrusive. Shooting sports, wildlife, or events, I won't recommend getting too close to the Nara deers. Hey, hey. Its portability makes it a great lens to travel with. 
but it's definitely not a lens where you can just vlog with. You could possibly vlog with the lens if you set it on a tripod, but you'll probably be using a wireless mic instead of a shotgun mic. You could probably make it work that way. If you also like to capture experiences in restaurants or your hotels, it's not a great lens for that. I highly recommend having a wide angle fast aperture lens with you for those situations. I actually wish I had the 24 mm f1.8 lens instead of the 35 mm with me on this trip. I rarely took out the 35 mm. I probably would have used it more if it was the 24 mm. That's all for my overall impressions of the RF 70 to 200 mm f4 lens and my experiences using it for travel photography and videography. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions for me. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!